Just across the street from Metropol is the Bolshoi Theatre, one of Moscow's best-known landmarks and certainly the city's best-known theatre. Built in 1825, it has been renovated several times. The most recent renovation took place between 2005 and 2011 and was accompanied with corruption allegations going over the budget and postponements of the theatre reopening. Now the theatre is back in business, offering audiences the best opera and ballet in town. In 2000, the new stage was added with a focus on more contemporary fare, while the main stage offers more classics like Pietro Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake. Next to the Bolshoi is the Mali Theatre focused on drama. The name is literally translated as small and as you can see the building is quite small compared with the Bolshoi, literally big. For several decades the theatre which moved to the present building in 1824 was closely linked with the name of Russian playwright Alexander Ostrovsky. 40 out of 54 plays he wrote premiered here so at some point the theatre was even nicknamed the House of Ostrovsky. Sum. Adjacent to the Mali Theatre is the building of the Central Department Store or Tsum. The company which originally owned it, Muir and Mirielli's, was founded by Scottish entrepreneurs Andrew Muir and Archibald Mirielli's in 1857. This building, in which Gothic elements are mixed with Art Deco, was erected in 1908 by architect Roman Klein. Legend has it that Russian author and playwright Anton Chekhov liked the department store so much that he named his dogs after its founders, Muir and Mirielli's. In Soviet times, Muir and Mirielli's were rechristened Mosturg and later Tsum. Lubanska Square No one knows exactly where the name Lubanka came from. Under one theory, it derives from Lubanitsa, a neighbourhood in Veliki Novgorod. Legend has it that in the 15th century, Tsar Ivan III ordered some Novgorod citizens to move to Moscow to decrease the city's power, and they brought the name with them. The square features the Detsky Mir Children's Department Store, currently under renovation, and the building of the FSB, the Russian secret police. It was erected in the late 19th century and was originally home to the insurance company Rossiya before being taken over by the NKVD, the predecessor of the KGB and FSB, in 1919. Mayakovsky Museum We stand in front of the Mayakovsky Museum. It is devoted to Vladimir Mayakovsky, one of Russia's most prominent poets of the 1910s and 20s. Mayakovsky praised the Bolshevik Revolution and wrote Vladimir Ilyich Lenin, a eulogy to the Bolshevik leader upon his death in 1924. He also slammed the capitalist world, to which he often travelled, in several poems including 1925's A Skyscraper Inside. The museum features, among other exhibits, the poet's recreated room in which he lived for 11 years before committing suicide in 1930. Former Soviet Foreign Ministry Building Erected in 1905, this building was home to the Soviet Foreign Ministry from 1918 to 1952 when it moved to the newly erected Stalin skyscraper on Smolenskaya Ploshad. And this square is named after Vaslav Vorovsky, one of the first Soviet diplomats. This is a statue of him. He was of Polish ancestry and apart from his activities as a Bolshevik party member, he was also a literary critic. In 1923, he was assassinated in Lausanne, Switzerland, where he served as Soviet representative at an international conference. Dinamo Building This building, constructed between 1928 and 1931, is an example of Soviet-era constructivism. The building was originally supposed to be home for the athletes of the Dinamo Sports Society, hence the name the Dinamo Building. Later, it housed the NKVD officers and reportedly some FSB officers still live in it today. It was conceived as part of a two-building ensemble, but the second one was never built. In Soviet time, it used to house the well-known number 40 gastronome. Rostopchin House This 18th century Baroque building, which is currently under restoration, used to belong to the Governor-General of Moscow, Fyodor Rostopchin. He is believed to have come up with the idea of burning Moscow as Napoleon's forces moved on the city in 1812. 
The building was also featured in Leo Tolstoy's novel War and Peace. In one scene, a courier delivers to the house a message from General Mikhail Kutushov ordering that the city be surrendered to Napoleon's troops. Trinden House This late 19th century house was once owned by the Trindens, a family that manufactured optical and geodesic devices and had a shop in the building. It was probably more famous in the 1920s when the Russian Astronautic Society met in the building with Konstantin Shalkovsky, the pioneer of the Soviet airspace industry, among the attendees. Sretensky Monastery The monastery was founded in 1397 by Prince Vasily I to commemorate an event that occurred two years before. Turkish ruler Tamburlaine was approaching Moscow with his troops, but when the Mother of God icon was brought to the city from Vladimir, Tamburlaine unexpectedly turned away and didn't invade Moscow. The street, on which the monastery is located, was originally named after the monastery and became Bolshaya Lubanka in the 19th century. Rozhdesvensky Convent Behind me is the Rozhdesvensky Convent, also known as the Convent of Nativity of Theotokos. It's one of the city's oldest nunneries and gave names to Rozhdesvensky Boulevard and Rozhdesvensky Street. Legend has it that the convent was founded by Maria of Rostov, mother of Prince Vladimir the Bold. However, its original location was in the Moscow Kremlin in 1386 and the convent moved to this place in 1484. A small Catholicon was erected here at the time, Sandanovskia Bathhouse. This is, perhaps, the city's best-known bathhouse, opened in 1808 and rebuilt in 1896. The interior decor has been mostly preserved since the late 19th century. Who hasn't visited Sandany hasn't seen Moscow, reads a slogan inside the bathhouse. That is certainly an exaggeration, but Sandany is one of the best options for checking out the traditional Russian banya.